Hi, this is David Wicks, Director of Instructional Technology at Seattle Pacific University. In this screencast, I want to share with you about an app called Readability. Do you find it difficult to read articles on the web because of the font size or page layout? Do you have trouble keeping up with web articles shared by colleagues or students? Do you wish you could read longer web articles on your Kindle on a screen that isn't backlit? If your answer is yes to any of these questions, you might want to download Readability on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or computer. Readability is a web and native app that can be used to help educators focus on web content rather than distracting ads and graphics. In this screencast, I will provide reasons for using this app, describe student populations that may benefit from it, offer instructional examples, identify costs, platforms, and describe features that would make readability even better. Why would we want to use this app in education? Readability allows teachers and students to read comfortably by giving us options for changing fonts and font sizes. Let me demonstrate. Here we see readability as the app that you would pull up on your iPad. And in the left column, you're seeing a list of 138 items that I have in my reading list. Some of these I've read and I just want to continue to uh, keep in my reading list for a while. Others I've archived. You can see a list of archived and currently I don't have any that I've marked as favorites. With this list of items I can click on the first one and we can see this uh, web article and uh, by clicking on it again, uh, down in the bottom left corner, we can see the, the capital and small letters A. And if I click on that, I have the ability to, to alter the text size. So I can make the text bigger, or I can make it smaller, uh, depending on my preference. Okay, I could, if there, was, uh, if there were columns, I could change the column width as well as I have the ability to change whether I want uh, this to be uh, dark text on, on a, a light background or light text on a dark background. Readability allows us to read without distraction by showing only the text and the important graphics on the page. So here we're looking at the article in readability up at the top, on the, on the right side, I can click on the, the little arrow that says Web View. And when I do that, it will open it up uh, in a browser, and you can see how this article appeared. Now, uh, Richard Byrne is a, a great uh, blogger and shares lots of interesting information for teachers. Uh, and his site is supported by some advertising. And so you'll see some ads on there. He also uh, makes reference to some of the other things that he's sharing on his site. Um, all of that is good, but when I really just want to focus on just the article, uh, I prefer to use readability to read it uh, so that I can see it in the format that you're seeing now. Uh, let's go to back to the internet here and I'm pulling up my web browser again and this time what we want to do is uh, take a look at how we might um, actually put something in readability on our iPad uh, so if I click on technology for teachers uh, this is uh, this the same free technology for teachers this is the same article uh, shown in the web browser and if I was wanting to uh, possibly uh, select a different article let me just go to his home page and we'll scroll down a little bit so he has a, a, a blog post on the War of 1812 I'm going to select that and if this was an article that I don't necessarily want to save but I just want to read it now and read it using readability, then uh, I've added uh, some uh, readability code 
to my bookmarks link. And so if I click on my bookmarks link in my browser, you can see a link that says read now, you can see another one that says read later, and another one that says send to Kindle. And so if I click on the one that says read now, it will convert it. And I will actually be able to just write in the browser, read it without, a, without having the extra information in there. If I click on the one that said read it later, what I would be getting is uh, uh, the article sent to my uh, readability app where I could read it later. So back on the original page, if I decided, oh, here's a great article, I don't have time to read it right now, I would click on my bookmark window, click read, it late, read later, and it would just save it, tell me that it's saved. So then the next time that I would open up my readability app, it will check for updates, and if there's a new update, there was one, I can see that one since I told it to read later. Okay, so I have that available on my reading list as well. What age or grade level is appropriate for this app? Well, I think that just depends on the articles that you select. The app doesn't have to be used by the students. It can be. It's very useful for students. But for younger students, you may just want them to be able to see uh, the article in this format. So, uh, again, looking at an article like this, let's pretend this is... Uh, uh, just a story that was on a web page. Uh, this is much cleaner and easier for a, a younger student to look at, especially if we possibly increase the font size compared to if we look again at the web view of it, uh, which then again includes all the links and the other information that uh, the author or the, the blogger originally intended for us to see. How would we use readability in our teaching? If someone has shared a web link with me uh, to an article and I don't have time to read it, I will uh, open that web link in my browser. For example, here's the War of 1812 one again. And I would uh, go to my bookmarks and I would choose the read later. And then the next time I go to readability, it's available there. While I'm in readability, if I've looked at the War of 1812 article and I'm finished with it, down at the bottom of the screen, uh, I may decide I'm going to use this article uh, in a future um, course. And so I could choose the archive link, uh, which is the little filing cabinet, and that would archive it into my system. Uh, if I decided, uh, actually, no, I, I don't want to use this later, uh, I've read it, I've got what I need from it, now I'm done with it, I can choose the trash can. And with the trash can, I can choose to delete it, and then it's gone from my system. If you are wanting your students to read articles that you uh, want to share that with them through readability, you can click on that article, and then in the bottom you can click on the share icon and here you could uh, get the link that you could share with them so if I click on the little link symbol um, the link has now been copied and so if I go to my uh, browser I can paste it and if I had either emailed that to them or shared it uh, maybe in a learning management system when they click on that link, they would go here instead of going to the original page uh, for the article, and they would just see the content here and be able to read through that. And then if there was a need to go to the original page, they have the link for the original page at the top. Older students that may have their own readability accounts, uh, you could um, have them throughout the course or throughout the school year, uh, they could... Um, uh, be made responsible for uh, creating a reading list, archiving important, one, important articles, um, starring favorite articles uh, as part of a, a reflective activity. How much does readability cost? 
Well, if you go to uh, readability.com slash apps, you can download browser add-ons uh, for your PC or, or Mac. Uh, you can um, get iPhone, iPad apps. You can get Android apps. Uh, you can uh, use, uh, uh, use it with other programs, uh, such as Reader, Pulse, and Longform Flipboard. Uh, and all of this is for free. So there is no currently no cost. Uh, for this app. What platforms does it run on? Well, just as this uh, list shows again, uh, it'll run on your Mac or your PC because it can run in the browser. Uh, it will run on either your iPhone or your iPad, uh, your Android, and in terms of a Kindle, uh, you'll be able to send articles to a Kindle and play those back. Uh, you can't uh, save uh, on a Kindle. How could readability be improved? Well, since it has an archiving feature, it would be helpful to add tagging so that we could uh, categorize uh, the uh, articles that we are archiving uh, and be able to search for those by category later. Uh, it also could benefit, I believe, by supporting PDFs. Uh, frequently I'll pull up a web page like this one here that is uh, a PDF article. Now the formatting looks great, but what I want to do is read it later. I want to be able to use a single program to choose to read it later rather than pick another tool uh, to archive this. Uh, and so if I want to just add this to my reading list, um, then I would want to be able to choose the read later and currently readability does not support PDFs. To summarize, uh, I think you should try readability. Uh, it's free, it's very easy to use, it's great for minimizing distractions uh, when using it with students and for your own reading. It works pretty well to organize readings that you might want to complete later and because it's a ubiquitous app, uh, you can read what you have on most any mobile device you have, as well as your uh, personal computer or laptop. If you have more questions about this, uh, you can contact me at dwix at spu.edu. Thank you.